So you want to hold off. Is this a very common objection that you're getting in the real estate business? I've heard it hundreds of times. Your client wants to hold off until blank. The market improves, this happens, that happens, the daughter or son graduates from whatever, the neighbor leaves, I mean like you name it, I've heard it. I have a quick video series that I'm going to be putting together about common objections that I've gotten and that have been submitted to me over the past few months. So we're going to start with, I want to hold off until. So I'm also going to be giving you what not to say and then what you definitely should say to make sure you handle your objections. By the way, quick side note, if you have any objections that you'd like me to handle live, make sure to comment down below. Let's dive into the video. So first objection is I want to hold off until. So let's start off with what not to say. I'm going to reiterate this quite a number of times in the future videos. What not to say or what not to do is to get frustrated, hang up the phone, all of a sudden have all these feelings because apparently they might not be working with you. Stay focused because the only purpose of being on the phone is to set an appointment. Because no matter what they say, most things are either an objection or a condition. And in this case, it's seriously nine times out of 10, an objection, not a condition. Because when someone says, by the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a condition really quickly. We don't want to sell our home until my wife retires. I retire. Something like that is a condition. You're not going to handle an objection of retirement. What you could do is you could try to get them to understand like, hey, listen, just curious. Hypothetically, because the market's so good, would you consider selling the home now for a fantastic price and then renting? So that way you have the freedom to you know, retire around your timeline. This way you don't have to wonder where the market is in a year or two or three when you're ready to retire. So you can kind of go into that, but you know, you might want to clarify. But again, what not to say? So if someone says to you, I want to hold off until my kids graduate. What you shouldn't say is, well, listen, I mean, like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you probably could just sell the house today, make a great amount of money. And, you know, you could just, you know, kick the kids out or you can make them rent or you should, you know, maybe you should just do this, this and this, or maybe you should do, you know, telling them what they should do. What you should be specifically doing is asking powerful questions that get them to think, that get their wheels turning. When you ask powerful questions, you're going to allow them to come to the conclusion on their own instead of you telling them what to do. So again, if they say, I want to hold off until blank, you shouldn't be saying, well, what I think you should do is sell the house now because the market's great. Or what I think you should do is tell your kids to, you know, find a place to rent and that way you, you could sell the house and, you know, move on with your life. You shouldn't be telling them what they should do. What you should be doing is asking powerful questions to get them to think about a better, more natural conclusion to their solution. Well, you can ask them specifically in these moments to say, just to clarify, would you like to start the process when X happens or would you like to be moved into your next home at that time? Typically when someone says, I want to hold off until, you know, I hold off until May because in you know, or June, because my kids graduate from college. Okay, great. We go say to them and say, just to clarify, you want to start the process of selling your home in June, July, whenever they just said to you, or did you want to be moved into your next home at that time? Because a lot of people get that confused first and foremost. They, you know, don't, they typically go, well, I want to sell the house in June. If they want to sell the house in June, then most likely they'll have to start the process a few months prior. You might be calling them in March or January. So it kind of gives you a better time frame of what they're looking at. Let's dive in the next phase of that same thing. They say, I want to hold off until the, ex the other side of the coin here is just to clarify, if you got a fantastic price for your home, because it sounds like you do have some interest in selling the home. If you got a great price for the house today, would you be, would you still be interested in moving or would you still want to hold off until you want to put it right back in their, right back in their court? Cause again, what typically happens here is that they most likely will accept an offer right now, especially because the market is so unbelievable across the nation. So if you say to them, like, listen, if you got an unbelievable offer right now, would you still consider selling the home? Yes. And on top of that, what you can do is also say like, listen, hypothetically, if I was able to get you an offer, great terms and they were, you know, in a great price and you were able to rent back the home in the meantime until when, whenever they say May, June, after the kids graduate, whenever they said, you know, you know, I wrote down, you know, when, you know, when all this commotion in the economy ends, whatever you want to say. But the point is that you could say, again, just to clarify, if you got a fantastic price for your house today with terms that would allow you to possibly rent back the home or not even close until X happens, would you still consider selling your home? So you can put it right back in their court. This a really, really allows you to see their motivation clearly and understand their timelines. So again, it's kind of the putting it back in their court type of handling of the ejection. And what I want to keep reiterating in these videos is you ask a powerful question 
and then you shut up. So you, you repeat the question back to them. You say, just to clarify, you handle the objection like we've just talked about, and then you're gonna stop talking and then allow them to speak. Then what you're gonna do is that you're gonna let them do that, and then you just wanna go right back into the close. So you say, I wanna hold off until June when my kids graduate. Okay, John, I can appreciate that. Just to clarify, would you like to start the process in June or would you like to be moved into your next home in June? Well, I'd like to be moved into my next home in June. Okay, great, John. Well, listen, right now it's March. It takes, on average, for the entire process from start to finish, it takes anywhere between 60 and 90 days. So we're in March right now. That brings us April, May, June, which would be right on time. So actually, to get you moved into your next home right around your schedule, we should probably start the process today. So John, what would work better for you, afternoons or evenings? Just get right back into it. So don't hesitate, don't wait for them to say something. You can just go right into the close. Listen guys, hope this video helps. And again, if you have any objections that you'd like me to handle, make sure to comment down below so I can handle them for you.